So you're taking the class and you're trying to figure out exactly what graphics cards you need to buy. Well, let's see if we can simplify that a little bit for you. So this is going to be on NVIDIA graphics cards, which are a little bit more in, in terms of you stuff. I prefer NVIDIA. AMD is fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with their used graphics cards. But for the money, I am more of an NVIDIA fan. I'll leave that up to you to decide about what you're going to do. But let's just kind of go through and help you figure out exactly what you need. So I want to go over the naming convention. So there's a 600 series, 700, 900, then they went to the 1000, then they kind of had this intermediate that was a 1600 series, and then they left the GTX line and went to the RTX line. And I will share this document with you so you can uh, use this if you want to research pricing or anything like that. So to kind of give you a, a historical timeline, these are nine, 10 years old at this point, they're getting a little bit aged. And, you know, graphics cards have a lifespan of approximately 10 years. That's not to say that you can't push them to work longer than that. But as each new generation comes out, there's more CUDA cores, there's more memory, and they run better and faster for less power. So your performance um, to price ratio is a thing you need to consider. So just, just to be aware of the GTX 600 and 700 series, they had 650s, 660s, 670s, 680s, and you'll notice the last two numbers are something that they have stuck with um, pretty much since they many, many generations before the GTX line. Anyway, so the GTX 600 and 700 series can be pseudo powerful for older games like maybe Minecraft or you might even do a Fortnite or two on it. Not that you're going to get epic games or, you know, 200 FPS out of it. But these have been in, have uh, the driver updates have been dropped by NVIDIA for these. So you going forward, even if you're trying to do like simple gaming, if there's a lot of updates to games, you might not be able to play these very well. The 900 series is still um, supported and driver updates are still supported for that currently as of the making of this video. Um, so you'll notice my, where I like to start uh, if I build a computer where I like to start putting uh, graphics cards for modern applications is I like to start, as I mentioned in class, with the 970. This is kind of like my, it's okay, but not great. And this is a four gig card. Pricing wise, you've seen the prices on the 900 and the 1000 series fall dramatically over the last year. Um, as bit graphics cards with Bitcoin prices have just gone down, 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 down. So the 970 is where I like to start. <clears throat> this is a four gig variety. Now, you know, the 950, the 750, the 650, these are all like budget cards going. And so as you see these 50 series, they're all just budget cards. So not really where you'd want to go. If you're trying to build like, uh, like my other previous video, like a, like a $200 gaming computer, you might go for a 650 or a 750. These things are relatively cheap, but let's say that you buy a hundred dollar HP computer and you're trying to just, you know, make a hundred dollar, $150 gaming computer to play maybe Minecraft. Then if, if you can pick up a $50, 650 or 750, it will do it. It's not going to do it great, but you could put these in just about any tower that you may buy. Um, if you have a little bit more money, you might go 950 and 1050, and then you kind of can get to where you'll do Fortnite, maybe a little bit, um, you know, again, not at great FPSs, but these are considered budget cards. So as you push toward the nine, you know, let's, so let's compare the 950 to the 980 Ti. So this was the budget. This was kind of a middle of the road. You know, this went to the 970. This was a four gig variety. So this is where it got to get, got to get a little better. The 980 was also a four gig variety. So it got a little bit more powerful. And then the 980 Ti was the six gig variant. Um, and what I would consider still relatively okay for modern gaming. Now, what you probably, if you want to do like middle of the road gaming, you probably want to get into the thousand series. Um, my personal favorite of these is the 1070. That seems to be a really good card for most applications. As long as you're not trying to do like uh, shaders and that type of stuff. It, it can, if you start trying to do any of the, the more modern stuff that's come out, um, modern technologies, you're going to need the RTX line. But for modern gaming, if you know, if you can find <clears throat> my favorite graphics card currently that I have in my computer at my house 
is a 1066 gig, and for every game I play up to and including Elden Ring, it still does a relatively good job. Now, there is stuff that's starting to come out that may make it a little more obsolete, but if you don't have high gaming demands, it's still good. Okay, so we have the 1000 series. Then we went to the 1600 series. This was a really weird kind of conglomeration of <clears throat> not really... It was kind of like a little middle of the road thing that NVIDIA did before they went to the RTX line. Now, if you're trying to do modern gaming and you have a significant funds, you can still get um, used RTXs that are the 2000 series. The 3000 series is kind of hard to get, but you know, as long as you're looking for modern gaming, I would anything in these categories would be fine um, for modern gaming. Um, your 2070 is great. I've had a couple of those. The 2080 is great. Um, I've only had a 3070 that I really played with a little bit and it was phenomenal. But the problem with is if you're looking at cost, these are going to be significantly more expensive than anything in the, in this line here. These have come, so the thousand series is starting to come down just due to their age. They're getting to that four or five year age. The 1600s are between two and three years and they're still a little bit expensive compared to the, the thousand series, but anything in your RTX line. You know, research prices, if you find a good used one out there, maybe get it. Just be aware that um, cryptocurrency mining rigs are starting to shut down with cryptocurrency being so cheap right now. And just be aware that, you know, this is something you got to be a little bit careful about. Okay, now the only thing we didn't mention here is there are Super and TI versions of these. And you'll notice I didn't mention, I didn't put any of the Super versions in here. Because to me, they're not really that much different. A 1650 and a 1650 Super are meh little better but if you have a ti version normally ti's may have more memory more cuda cores anything like that so if you have like a 1660 or a 1660 ti the ti will definitely be better so this has just been a real quick little video to give you an idea about naming conventions you know the 650 is cheap the 680 the higher the number you go the better they get the 750 would be like for a budget you know you could buy like any little cheap hp or dell and pop it in there and it would work, but you're not gonna be able to do that. These take a lot more power. So as you go up, it gets better, but as you go up, the wattage that's required goes uh, up as well. So just a quick little review of what you need to know about the GTX and the RTX line. Hopefully you found a little bit out of this. Um, we'll go over uh, more videos in this series about exactly how do you figure out what you need, but this is just to kind of give you a little history of NVIDIA model numbers and give you a little understanding of what they are. Please place any questions in the comments and we'll answer them. Thank you.